This is a uh, Mirage 88. Customer brought this in to have it uh, checked out, gone through, have a transceiver alignment done to it. And main thing was no output power. Um, now, this is just really quick. I'm not going over this radio in detail or anything about it. Um, it's just another black box radio. Nothing more than a RCI Ranger, you know, base, base radio. Just a different name on the faceplate. But uh, just just goes to show that sometimes it doesn't take any test equipment whatsoever to repair a radio. Um, I first thing I did pop the covers off, looked at the bottom side of the board, solder traces looked okay. A couple of the header sockets were a little questionable along the front edge, which is normal for all these radios, especially if they've ever been used mobile. So I just desoldered them and, and resoldered them just to be sure. Because, like I say, some of those did look like they were getting ready to break out, so you know, wouldn't have been too long type deals. But uh, the actual problem, like I say, no RF output power. So I powered it up, has received. It was very erratic, though. Um, you know, I'd, I'd bump the radio and it would kind of come and go. And you'd key the microphone and the needle would move. And if you tapped the radio, that would change a little bit. But I really wasn't showing anything on RF power meter. So, uh,. I just, first thing I looked at was the first thing that was wrong. And that's what I say. A lot of times you don't need test equipment. Just use your eyes. People forget the basics. Um, you know, stuff can break, and that's exactly what happened in this radio. And what broke is the wire <laughs> that goes to the antenna connector. So, yes, we're not going to have absolutely any RF output power if that's not attached to the coax connector on the back of the radio. And I assume it was receiving somewhat because it was kind of making an iffy connection. And, of course, it was, you know, really close. <laughs> you know, a few electrons widths away, if anything, from the connector. So it was able to pick up a little bit of signal. But, yeah. So, you know, this is just one of those things. If your radio doesn't work, even if you don't, uh, you know, have a bunch of test equipment, a lot of times... Just a simple check over. Look, look for the basics. Do you see any electrolytic capacitors that look like they've exploded? Um, you know, check the back side of the circuit board. Are there any burn traces? Are there any bad solder joints? Um, now, this radio does not have an excessive amount of uh, solder flux on it, you know, left over from manufacturing. But in many cases, um, especially some of the older radios from the you know 70s and 80s, oh my God, the flux can be so thick on there. It's it looks like somebody poured a half gallon of honey on the back of the board. Um, you know, clean that off and inspect the solder traces. Uh, you know, simple things, you know, to find a, a bad solder joint is just push on the board. You know, if you, you have an intermittent receiver transmit problem, especially intermittents, just pushing on the board, just flex it. Find somewhere in the middle of the board and press on it. Um, you know, press along the edges. If the problem comes and goes with you pushing on, on the board, you know you've got a bad solder joint problem. Easy way to track down problems like that, even if you're not good, you know, your eyesight, let's say, is not so good. Um, just take something plastic. Uh, you don't have to have a fancy alignment tool that's non-conductive. Hell, any piece of plastic will work. A screwdriver handle, a, hell, a comb <laughs> you know, will work. Just rub something. You know, if it's you're having intermittent receiver transmit problems, you know, let's say key the microphone and just rub you know, take your plastic, you know, whatever it might be. You know, I've got little fiberglass shafts that I use. But just rub it across the board. Rub it across the solder traces. If you've got a bad, you know, bad solder trace, a lot of times, or bad solder connection, a lot of times as soon as you hit that bad bad connection, it'll it'll either start working or stop working, one or the other. And, you know, once you've traced it down, ah, it's in this little area, then you can just go through and touch each individual lead in that area until you find a bad one. Then you can reflow the, you know, the solder. Um, like I say, it, do it doesn't have to be complicated all the time. And this, this radio was a perfect example of it wasn't a complicated problem. It was something extremely simple. Nothing more than a broken wire. So, you know... I guess I'm lucky because I think this is my second easy one of the year. <laughs> I seem I seem to get all the uh, nightmare radios, but uh, yeah, this one actually turned out to be yeah really really simple. So there you go. There's just a few tips on checking it. Oh, and other things, 
uh, connectors, you know, interconnects, a lot of these plugs, like I say, on these type radios, a lot of these main, you know, here, here, and here, there's headers on the top side of the board for plugs, which you can't even see those for the frequency counter module, but there's plugs, you know, make sure those are, like I say, if the radios, mobile radios have been in use for any length of time, it's very common for these solder connections to break out, because you have to remember, when the radio is mounted in a vehicle, all the components, everything's hanging down. So you have the weight of the wiring harness. Every time you hit a bump, this wiring harness is bouncing down and trying to rip itself out of the circuit board. So, you know, that puts a lot of stress on solder connections. So, you know, any radio, and it's not just this style of radio. You know, mobile radios, pretty much for the you know, majority of all of them, the components are facing down. So, you know, anytime you see large blobs of wiring harness going to big connector sockets, make sure you check those connections. Because like I say, every time you hit a bump in a vehicle, that's it's basically trying to rip itself out of a circuit board. So those are common failure points, you know, or bad solder joints. Um, you know, if you're having frequency counter problems, let's say, in, in this radio, just check the connections, you know, right here. Because same thing, wiring harness, this can move, you know, can put stress on those header sockets. Same thing with echo board. Um, you know, the binary board over here, which is just an adder board for the PLL circuit. But, uh, you know, same thing. There's plugs, connections, wires hanging off of it. So, you know, right there you can see down in there there's a big wiring harness goes up to a, to a header socket right here. So, you know, maybe you're having channel problems. You've got channels in one, one band position and not in the next, or they repeat. They're doing all kinds of weird and wonky stuff. Solder connections. You'd be surprised. How many radios I repair? It's nothing more than a bad solder joint, or simple things like that. Um, I wish more problems I troubleshot were simple like that, <laughs> but uh, hey, I'll take them whenever I can get them. So there you go. There's just a few tips on uh, some basics of troubleshooting. Um, like I say, people people seem to forget to use their their senses, eyes. Use your nose. Anything smell burnt. So I hope that gives somebody some pointers and tips for troubleshooting.